Well, hello there, minders. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today, we're going to look at a new brush brand. It's new to me. This is the Dynasty Brush Company. I had never heard of Dynasty before, or if I had seen them, I had paid little attention to them. But I got curious. I'm working, by the way, and this is another little mini announcement. I'm working on a affiliate ship with the Brush Guys. And I was checking out the Brush Guys website. More to come on the Brush Guys and, and the affiliate. You'll start seeing the affiliate links from them probably showing up. But the Brush Guys had a dynasty, quite a few Dynasty brushes on their site. And I thought, that's a brand I want to check out. You're going to discover these brushes right along with me. And I, of course, naturally, am just focusing in on their watercolor brushes. They actually sell a whole bunch of different kind of brushes for other mediums, but I'm focusing in on those, on some of their brushes that are suitable for watercolor. But these look like to be some of their best and I wanted to give them a try. Now, Dynasty Brush is part of the FM Brush Company. They claim to make brushes to fit a whole line of budgets. In art, they make everything from fine Kalinskis, quills, to high quality synthetics and a lot of uh, very cutting edge um, synthetic blends. They claim to have some very uh, creative and new synthetic brush types. So it looked interesting. This is not a new or fly by night company. Again, like I say, they're new to me. But let's focus in on watercolor and particularly what I was interested in. Now, I did not get any uh, natural hair, I got only synthetics. And these are all, I think, chosen out of their best. Either their best category or from a multimedia category. Categories that are suitable for both watercolor mediums like oil or acrylic. First up, I want to concentrate on these three groups in the center. And again, I'm just going to introduce you to the brush. And then we'll talk about what they say about that brush before we do some testing. First up is a brush called Triplex. So really, I have very little information on the Triplex uh, by either Dynasty or on other websites. Uh, looks very much like a golden Taclon type brush. It's considered one of their best quality brushes. So not much I can tell you about it. Caviar. Caviar is supposed to replicate a squirrel hair, which means it's designed to hold a lot of water, uh, probably a finer, uh, slightly limper brush. Black Gold was probably the most interesting to me to try. Dynasty calls this their flagship premium quality brush. It's rated for oils, acrylics, or watercolor. It's a really attractive kind of a brush. Black ferrule, sort of a two-tone tip. Then they actually had another line that was Faux Squirrel, and that is Faux Squirrel. So it'll be interesting to see what the difference is between this and the Caviar, which uh, they call a squirrel imitation also their faux squirrel products are supposed to hold uh as much water as squirrel so they say but also uh wear longer squirrel is known to wear out quickly all right what else we got this is a multimedia brush they had called the kalel was interested in those it's actually listed on their website as a specialty brush it's supposed to be a kalinsky sable uh replicator it's supposed to imitate those beneficial characteristics soft but a nice spring this is apparently a proprietary fiber creation from them supposed to be cutting edge high quality synthetic combination and basically they call it the fiber of the future so i guess they're kind of guarding the secrets as to what that means but made for watercolor acrylics inks mixed media and very versatile brush they claim so we'll see what that's about i have three of those Again, real quickly back to the black gold, I ordered several of those since they say that's one of their flagship brushes. So I'm curious to see why. I've got uh, several rounds and a couple of flats and a sort of a rigger liner. All right, so those are the Dynasty brushes that I have. Okay, so first up, let's take a look at this Triplex, which I don't have any information about. Even on their website, they don't say much about it. So a fairly standard synthetic. So a good way to test springiness is off the t flicking it off the tip of your finger with a mid-sized brush like this. This is a number eight. Tip of your finger is very, very sensitive. And so you can feel when something's stiff. And this one is stiff. Kind of reminds me of the Grumbacher Golden Edge, which is uh, one of the stiffest synthetics that I use. 
And there are times when you want that. There are times when you want a stiffer brush. Uh, if you want to do light lifting, you want to be able to push the paint a little more decisively. Um, it's good to have stiffer brushes. So let's just apply a little paint with these. And as I said, you're seeing my real first time test session on these. It's a good quality brush. I can tell. Applies paint evenly, it seems. I've got my paint on a fairly steep angle. It's got a reasonably fine tip to it. And as I mentioned, these are first impressions. You really can't judge a brush till you've used it quite a bit. If it's a brush that gives you experience and you, you continue to go back to it, it's usually pretty good. And you know, today with quality brushes, and all of these are supposedly quality brushes, uh, you're gonna find a hair's breadth difference between all of them. You're not gonna say, oh, this brush is like miles, miles better than anything I've ever used. You're just not gonna, I mean, unless you're using a really cheap brush and none of these are you get some real dark paint pigment in here it has a lot of good water retention to it not bad let me try the slightly bigger one same variety the dynasty triplex probably either word i wish they had more information on their site and i even went to the brush guy site just for a little info the triplex either stands for a different diameter of fibers that they use which is common that's one of the ways they try to simulate Kalinsky or it might just mean the fact that it's a mixed media brush or multimedia brush oil watercolor and acrylic this is a bigger wash brush a number 12 round and it's pooling because of my angle of my paper very nice so uh, decent performing brush so far on um, the smaller one especially the tip handles fine a uh, bit in the very stiff, what I'd call the very stiff category. So uh, that's a good lifter, I think. Come back into a wet wash. If you want to put in a little bit of water there, use the stiffness of the brush to kind of brush it up. A decent performer so far that I can tell. Let's move on over to Caviar. Caviar is supposedly their uh, squirrel, one of their squirrel imitations, synthetic imitations. It is much softer than that triplex, you can tell. Uh, not as soft as I would say as real squirrel. So this is a softer brush. Uh, they probably, it feels like they use a finer hair. Put this hair between uh, my fingers, I sort of feel it. It's, it's very velvety. Very similar to a silver brush black velvet, which has that same velvety soft feel. Now the silver brush black velvet actually has real squirrel hair in it. It's a synthetic and squirrel blend. This one is all synthetic. Maybe a tiny bit stiffer than the black velvet. Let me turn this over. And over here is caviar. Nice. I like the feel of a softer brush. Probably why silver brush black velvet is one of my favorites. There are times I like a stiffer brush uh, on certain techniques, a dry brush for one, if I'm going back in and lifting. But when I'm putting down paint initially, I like soft washes. I like the feeling of control I get on the tip from a soft brush. So this feels very, very nice. This caviar reminds me a lot of a black velvet. And I'm getting a more even, slightly more even dispersion of paint, which may be to a testament to its water retention capability. Now the advantage over a synthetic faux squirrel versus real squirrel, real squirrel wears out quickly if you use it a lot. Synthetic has a much higher wear quotient. This is a number six round. Now to get that soft control, you, you give up some stiffness for, you know, going in and doing something like lifting. But And of course, uh, water retention capability in a squirrel or a faux squirrel also means that if you get too much water on your surface, you're going to be able to pick it up easily. So if I blot my brush out. It just soaks it right right up yeah i may have to get a few more of these caviar these are nice not like i need them though here is a caviar 10. Now for a faux squirrel that would hold, should hold a lot of water and it does sometimes the bigger wash brushes like the with the faux squirrel or the squirrel blends like the silver brush black velvet sometimes they can overwhelm you with the water in the bigger sizes particularly 
but again I can manage the moisture on the surface because of all that capacity just one simple dab on my cloth and I have enough capacity to go back in here and pick up some of the stiffer tack line blends uh, don't pick up quite as much water and so even on a slant here I haven't had a lot of trouble in getting an even wash I didn't get as much rundown I was able to control it so it's fairly flat so yeah and this is they do claim this is one of their best brushes really liking the caviar and while we're talking about that one let's go on and uh, test the one that they call faux squirrel it's different looking it's got a lighter fiber in it with a darker tip it feels soft not as soft as caviar though it definitely has more spring and snap to it so it's interesting that it's called faux squirrel and the caviar seems more like squirrel good brush dispersion as i would expect does seem to hold a lot of water Yeah, so interesting. Um, this seems less like squirrel than the caviar, but it does hold a lot of water. Seems like a nice brush. Not a super fine point for a number eight. That's uh, not unusual though. Some synthetics are that way. I mean, look at that beautiful flat wash there, and even on an incline. I mean, it's just gorgeously flat. But it's not unusual for a brush line particular brush line not to have sharp points you know i i've noted both princeton neptune and the da vinci cosmotop spin brushes which are all great brushes both great brushes but none of them have very sharp or detailed points unless you move to a very detailed brush so it's just it's just a brush choice i guess let me just feel you can kind of feel the coarseness or the velvety smoothness of a brush as I was doing earlier. As I pointed out, this one felt really fine and velvety. And it is. It's it's definitely limper. You can see that with it damp, I can brush it and kind of move it. That's very similar to Silver Brush Black Velvet. This, not so. Extremely snappy. So this is much stiffer for a faux squirrel. This is really more like a Kalinsky imitation, but it's a pretty nice brush. And I actually bought some flats in this one, so let me try those out. A nice crisp beveled edge, very thin knife edge. If you use flats much, you know you can do some detail painting with the corner. You can do some linear stuff with the edge. I like the way these these faux squirrels distribute pigment. I like that a lot. I wouldn't choose it if I needed a full bodied round with a really fine tip, but there are a lot of times you don't need that. I got the big one. Again, I'm, I'm really surprised they call this faux squirrel. It's just got a lot of stiffness to it. Not really much I can tell. I mean, it holds a fair amount of water. All right, so I would say the faux squirrel, if you're actually looking for something that's closer to squirrel, real squirrel, the caviar would be it. It's, it's really very much like a silver brush black velvet, both in softness and the way it behaves and handles. Uh, the caviar is similar to that. This is more stiff. Another one I could compare it to would be the Princeton Neptune. Princeton Neptune is meant to imitate squirrel also, but it's all synthetic. And it's got that very, very fine, soft, velvety feel to it. You get it wet. So Princeton Neptune is in between uh, the caviar and this faux squirrel. It's, Princeton Neptune has a little more snap than, say, this caviar or the silver brush black velvet. So good to know. I'm going to spend a little more time with these just because Dynasty calls this their flagship brush. And that is, that is the black gold. So let's take a look at the black gold. Um, uh, I have two more brushes to cover the black gold and the Kalel. 
black gold this is the one they call their flagship brush it's very stiff very springy so it's going to be closer to a Kalinsky sable this is an Escoda Reserva Kalinsky sable it's a little softer now they say uh, this is their flagship brush but they don't say necessarily for watercolor this is rated for watercolor acrylics and oil so when you have a brush that's meant to be all things to all mediums there a lot of times are compromises performs pretty well I have a better point on this number eight than I did on the faux squirrel slightly better point Probably doesn't hold as much water and that makes sense since the other was supposedly their faux squirrel but there's times you want that you know, there's times you prefer a drier brush one that doesn't overwhelm you with water a lot of times actually I bought several of these because they said it was their flagship bottle now I'm wishing that what I had purchased more of was the caviar Good brush though. You know, as I said before, when you get into brushes of this quality, the differences, the characteristic differences are minuscule. They're all really good brushes. They're all going to perform fairly well. And honestly, you've got to be pretty experienced to tell much difference. And I mean, I'm pretty experienced and I'm only telling very slight differences in these. I think you'll like the black gold. Uh, if you don't, you know, if you just want one of medium uh, absorption and, and water holding capability, but you want a snappy brush, black gold's good. Black gold would be perfect for that. Their uh, wash brushes, their flats have these Aquarell handles, you know, for scraping and scratching. I haven't tried a rigger yet. I bought this liner, black gold liner. It's really kind of short for a liner. It's more like a Oh, well, maybe I didn't buy liner. Maybe this was a number two round. Let's see. Yeah, that was a round. This is actually the liner, but it, it's pretty short too. Yeah. Nice. And I like stiffer liners too. This is going to be a great liner. A great rigger. I'm running out of room here, but I'm going to just get out this big flat. Nice even dispersion. So just a good quality brush with even dispersion and really good snap. I'll have to report back later on how well these do over time, you know, in terms of durability and how they hold up. So now on to the Kalel. This is what they call their cutting edge bristle. Uh, their proprietary blend or design or engineering or whatever you want to call it years in development um, has a semi medium to coarse feel to it maybe not quite as soft as real Kalinsky on this Reserva but I'll tell you so far the snap on this is closest to a Kalinsky it is a medium stiffness not as limp as squirrel but not as stiff as some of those other synthetics so it kind of splits that divide really well. And that's pretty much what you feel in the snap of most Kalinskis. You can tell right away though, it doesn't seem to have the point that a good Kalinsky has. More like those other brushes I mentioned of synthetics that they're good performers, but they don't hold uh, really fine or don't have very fine points like the Princeton Neptune or the Da Vinci Cosmotop spin. One of my one of my favorite brushes right now, it's a synthetic and has a great point, is the Princeton Elite. They just have fantastic points. And they do seem to hook a little bit on the tip. Um, that doesn't, however, seem to affect the, the painting. You get just a little very small hook. So I just thought that's sort of an aside. I have yet to find a company putting out a synthetic that comes close to 
a Kalinsky and also holds a point like a Kalinsky. Now this Kalel is a good example. It's got good snap, very similar water performance and dispersion. And there are some Kalinskys that don't have great points either, but the Princeton Elites are just turning into one of the best faux synthetic or faux Kalinskys out there. Uh, when you consider everything, including the point. They actually have renamed the line. They're calling it the Princeton Aqua Elite. So, just just an aside. I like the consistency, though, and the snap. This, this has a softer feel, a really good in-between. I have a rigger liner uh, of this variety that I bought. This is a little heavier liner than the other one I just showed you in the black gold. The liner's longer. A longer liner gives you a little more shock absorption. I don't know if you know that. I, I did a video on riggers and liners. And the reason they make them long is because they're so thin, They that holds more, more water and pigment, but it also gives you a little bit of more stability in shake. So you can get a smoother line because that length adds, acts like a shock absorber. And so shake is minimized. That's the reason for the link. That would be one of the drawbacks of like this shorter rigger. Yeah, it's really nice liner. This Kalel, I like it. Really nice. Just enough snap. Limp, squirrel-like uh, liners I don't like too much. The only other Kalel I got was this number four. It's just a, a medium, small, detail round and on something like a four I would want and expect pretty detailed pretty fine line and I do have that on the four on eights and larger uh, depending on the brush type you may get that you may not but when you get down to a four even a six but especially four when you get down to a four you usually are expecting a really fine line all right, so that is the dynasty. So what do I think so far? Uh, well, you know, it's a first look and different brush types, different brush stiffnesses come into play under different circumstances. Right now, uh, I'm pretty impressed with the black gold, their best brush, what they call their best brush. They call this one one of their best too though. Uh, I think I'm most impressed for watercolor. I'm most impressed with the caviar. It reminds me so much of the silver brush black velvet. All right, minders. Well, thank you for joining me on this little brush excursion. I hope you found it interesting. It's always fun and exciting to check out new gear, see what it's all about. If you're in the market for some new brushes, not sure what you're looking for, maybe this will give you some information to help you identify something you want to try. I don't know if it'll be in this video or not. It might be. Uh, I'll have a, an affiliate link down below. Not only the normal uh, Amazon affiliate links, but a affiliate link with the Brush Guys. It's a company out of California. They have good prices. I've sampled their, their delivery and order service. It all seems to do really, really well. I've been impressed with them. And if you use the code MINDER, M-I-N-D-E-R-5, capital M, MINDER5, You'll get 5% off your order. Thank you so much for watching everyone. And thank you so much patrons for being sponsors for this channel. And we'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.